a short preface to this video. This part of the video to do with ignitions is not just limited to small engines, okay? This is for any engine with an ignition uh, coil and spark, okay? And what I'm going to show you now is is to how we observe the actual spark line and the spark voltage because if we can look at the spark, the spark plug is the window into the combustion chamber. Whatever's happening in the combustion chamber will be reflected in the spark line, including turbulence and anything else. Now, we are still using the primary side of the coil. And why are we using the primary side of the coil? Well, because everything that occurs in the secondary side of the spark occurs on the primary side, albeit at a much lower voltage, it's still reflected. Okay, so if you connect a scope to the primary side, whatever's going on in the secondary will be reflected at that lower voltage in the primary. It's not the high voltage coming back as a spike through the primary. It's just a mirror because it's, it's a transformer, mutually inductive uh, transformer with two coils in it, essentially, the, the coil. Now, um, what you will see, just to um, give you a heads up because it gets a little bit, um, might get a little bit confusing in the heat of battle with the engine running and the spark going up and down what we'll have is the initial um, voltage from the uh, coil rising very quickly um, and once it ionizes the air between the air gap of the spark plug then the spark jumps so what we'll see is a long spike of potential and then we'll see a line which is actually the spark and that's the spark line and the position of that line and the slope will be represented in voltage but also the distance where that line stops okay Will be the amount of time that the spark is sparking for okay so we can see the time base across the screen in milliseconds we can see the voltage down so what we'll expect to see first is a potential spike of potential voltage the spark begins to flow and then as the spark flows it continues and then it stops and we'll go back to the normal non-sparking primary voltage um, what you will also see is as we increase the gap the potential line will rise even more the spike will get bigger and bigger but not only that the, sp the amount of time that the spark sparks for will get shorter and shorter okay in between here now um, what we can see there is is the, the the increase and decrease of spark or the increase and decrease of spark resistance okay so the increase of spark resistance with a bigger gap means a shorter amount of time the spark sparks for at a greater voltage okay and this will be reflected on the screen so just uh, so that you know what you're looking at um, now when we zoom into um, our spark line we can actually see the time of the spark and the potential if we actually take the lead right off and we have no spark, then our then we'll have a, a very high potential spike at the coil, but we'll have no spark line. It will just be dissipated straight back to the primary, original primary signal. Okay. So what you'll see is every now and then when it's sparking, you'll see the spark line and then occasionally it'll disappear and the line will go all the way back to the back. And that means it's just missed a spark which on an engine is a way to determine if the spark is actually misfiring because if the spark's misfiring you'll see a blip you'll see a, um, an irregularity of jumping around and you'll see this gap and length of spark line disappear occasionally and jump back and forward and that means it's a misfire not only can you determine um, um, any load or increase of uh, compression temperature etc that, that increases the spark resistance um, will again cause the same thing. Therefore, any mixture turbulence inside it will be reflected in the vertical voltages of the spark line. Okay, so in a clean spark in, in open air, we'll just get a nice even straight line because we've got a, a, a regular um, density of air outside. But when we put it into a cylinder, and I'll show you in the next video, um, when we put it into a cylinder, we'll actually see the variations of turbulence in the actual spark gap from the mixtures and we'll see how long it sparks for we'll see the potential of the voltage okay the one we're doing right now um, we're just sticking to the potential voltages the spark line and uh, what you'll be looking at okay so we'll move right along 
Now, after the end of this video, the next thing we're going to get into is um, establishing exactly why wasted spark systems are, uh, are, are fine, not a problem at all, and they are used, used in numerous uses. And we'll show you on the oscilloscope how we can differentiate the, the two spark lines of the uh, wasted spark under overlap and the, um, the actual high intensity spark that's occurring when the engine fires. And we can see the irregularities of the engine firing in that spark so we can tell the difference between the two. Um, so um, that takes is a bit of an extension of this. But let me just say that anything with a coil and a spark, okay, and you can connect directly to the primary winding, you can use an oscilloscope to look at the spark even if you don't have a secondary lead to connect to or an inductive lead to connect to the secondary, you can still see a reflection of the secondary on the primary side. So that opens a lot of doors because, as I say, if you look at the spark line and once you understand what's going on there, that is your visual window to what's going inside, what's going on inside your combustion chamber. So it's well worth familiarising and knowing this because you can read a lot about what's going on inside your engine real time. Okay, let's get on with the video. Now the next one. We're going to go now. We're going to start it up. And I've got a secondary, I've got a, I've got a bolt inside the spark plug lead, and I've got a earth lead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open and close the gap. Sort it out the coil there. Okay, and you'll see the ignition button. Alright, now watch what happens when I give it a spark. Alright, now that's a very small spark, and it's not the spark plug, it's just jumping across the lead. So that's a very short spark. Alright, now as I increase the spark, watch what happens. Okay, it gets very short, that line gets very, very short. And then as the spark gets shorter and shorter and shorter, smaller spark, less resistance to the spark, the line gets longer and longer. Okay? Until it's shorted out completely. Alright? That's shorted completely. You can see, there's the signal. Alright, so I'll show you two. A bit spread further out. Start sparking. We increase the spark. That line gets shorter. So that's shorted out. Alright. That's shorted out. That's almost shorted out. Now it's getting longer. Bigger spark, bigger spark, bigger spark, bigger spark. Alright, that's a really big bright spark. Alright. That's the short spark. That's the big spark. Alright, short spark, short spark, big spark. So the smaller spark, the line is the smaller spark, the line is long. Bigger spark, shorter and shorter and shorter. So you can see that as the spark increases, that line gets shorter and shorter and shorter. But what also happens is, and I'll show you, is, is this line down here, the inductive spike, also gets longer and longer. So the voltage increases and voltage decreases. Because remember, on the vertical plane, voltage is on the vertical. Okay? So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put the spark, uh, I'm going to put the uh, pickup lead on the, on the uh, oscilloscope times 10, and then we're going to just have a look at the actual inductive spikes. Okay, now we've got the uh, now we've got the lead on times 10. We're actually going to zoom back out of that uh, that spark line, okay? That line, that length of that line is called the spark time, okay? So now what we're going to do is we're actually just going to check the peaks of the potential voltage spike that goes vertically down. Okay? See the lines going down vertically. I'll move the screen up. Okay, so you can just see those lines. So 
there's a spark. As the spark decreases, what's what happens? Now as the spark increases, longer and longer until okay, longer and longer. The wider the spark gets, the more those lines shoot down, which means higher and higher voltage. Now, if I take it off completely, see the line goes all the way down. Alright. See the line going right down in the centre. Just concentrate on that. Okay? Alright, now I've cooled it out. And you can see the line, the line's disappeared. Alright? So the voltage is very, very low now. And then as I increase the gap, the lines will get longer and longer and longer. So there's a very small gap. The gap gets larger and larger and larger. See the lines are going down, about three quarters of the way down the screen. Now if I disconnect it completely, really big spark. Now you now see it's going to the maximum reserve voltage of the coil, all the way down here. Okay? See that? That's the maximum reserve voltage of the, bolt, of, the, of the coil going down the screen. So as I shorten the gap, the big gap, and then I decrease the gap, smaller, 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 until it's now until it's shorted out, okay? So that's shorted out, that's shorted out, that's open secondary. That's a large gap. gap gets smaller, that line gets smaller. So it's sorted out.